So today we're going to be talking about the four-step system that I use to break free from porn. Uh, so how I put an end to a habit of mine that was really a decade old at that time, probably even 15 years old uh, at that point, and, and really found a lot more satisfaction in my life, found a lot more meaning and purpose. Uh, so we're going to be diving straight into that today. So how do you know if you are in the right place? There's a couple ways you will know. The first is if you are sick of wasting time and energy on unfulfilling distractions. So maybe just spending too much time on these things that don't bring you any fulfillment and you realize it's taking away from your life. That's one way to know you're in the right place. Another is that maybe you're noticing some of your sexual desires and interests becoming more extreme. So maybe they're getting out of alignment with your, your values, your ethical system, or maybe just not in the direction that you want it to go. It could also be that you're tired of hiding your behaviors from your loved ones, maybe lying to people, uh, hiding what you're doing, and that can be exhausting as well. Or just noticing that porn is causing problems in your life, your work, or your relationship. So there are a lot of different ways that the problems of porn addiction or just uh, overconsumption of porn can show up. So maybe you're noticing some of those. And then finally, maybe you're here because you want to know how to quit porn without relapsing. Maybe you've tried quitting in the past, but it just hasn't worked. So today we're going to be diving into a lot of these topics. What we're going to cover today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my story. So how did I uh, notice that I was addicted to porn? How did I break free? And then I'll talk about the four essential steps uh, that I took to break free and what I work on with my clients in breaking free. And then after that, I'm going to focus on the three most common mistakes. And that's really important because even if you do those four essential steps, but you're not mindful or aware of those three common mistakes, uh, then it's going to be hard to actually break free or start that recovery journey. So we're going to talk about the three most common mistakes that people make towards the end. After that, I will talk about uh, the Unhooked community that I'm launching. So that's going to be starting next month and so there will be an offer at the end to join that if you're interested and then we'll end with some q a so if you have any questions uh, definitely be writing them down uh, whether it's questions about the content about your own personal uh, process or journey where you're stuck so we'll have q a towards the end of the session <clears throat> i also want to take a moment to say who this training is not for and first and foremost, this is not for you if you are looking to stay inside your comfort zone. So breaking free from porn, breaking free from any bad habit really requires stepping outside your comfort zone, getting uncomfortable. Uh, and if that's what you want, if you just want to stay in that comfort zone, then this really isn't for you. This is going to take work. It's going to take some brutal self-honesty, you know, really looking at yourself clearly uh, and, and seeing maybe some of the ways that you're not acting so skillfully or not living in alignment with your values. Um, so that's the first one. If you're looking for a quick fix or a life hack, that's also not what this workshop is about. This is about a much deeper process of recovery. So how do you create a long lasting recovery, something that really lasts long term, not just a week and then you relapse and go back into it. Also, if you're not committed to showing up and doing the work. And then finally, if you think that your life is going to be fixed and perfect by the end of this presentation, then I've got bad news for you. You know, it's not going to be fixed. It's not going to be perfect. This workshop that we're doing is really about giving you a roadmap, giving you uh, the kind of the journey ahead of you. What's the path to walk on that's going to break you free, but it takes much longer than 45 or 60 minutes. So. Just know that changing your life takes time, hard work, and consistency. So my promise to you is to deliver as much value as humanly possible in the next hour. I've got myself some tea because I'm going to be talking fast and quick. I promise this won't be another boring, theory-driven PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to keep it engaging, entertaining, and actionable, so things you can really take away from today. There will be no woo-woo mysticism, no new age spirituality, and no religious dogma. There are many programs out there that, uh, you know, do have those. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, this is not one of them. This is a very grounded, down-to-earth, pragmatic approach to recovery from porn addiction or uh, overconsumption of porn. 
by the end, I promise you also have a complete roadmap for your recovery journey. So you will know exactly what you need to do to break free if you are struggling with it. And then finally, everything that I do offer today is really based off of my own personal experience or the experience of my clients. So it's how I broke free and how I've worked with my clients to help them break free as well. So let's get started. A little bit of background. Uh, if you haven't met me before, I know a lot of the people on the call have met me. You know who I am and a little bit about my background. I'm a co-active coach. Uh, I work with executives and professionals, entrepreneurs, uh, and I'm also an addiction specialist. So many of the past years I've been focused on addictions of different sorts, digital addictions in particular. I'm also a certified teacher with SIY Global. This is a mindfulness program that started at Google. My background is really in the sciences, which is why I do approach this from that more pragmatic uh, approach. And I've also spent time as a Buddhist monk in Asia. So I have that background in meditation, a little bit of spirituality, but again, for me, it's more just a way to train the mind, cultivate good habits. And I'm also the creator of Unhooked, which I'll be speaking about a little bit here and there because it's kind of what we're talking about today. But I want to take you back in time, back to when it all began for me. And so we're going to go back in the time machine and I want to take you back to 2008. This was uh, when I was just finishing at the University of California at Davis, uh, finished my, my bachelor's degree in genetics. And on the outside, you know, if you were to see me from the outside, I was a typical type A high achiever. So I had a 3.93 GPA. By the end, I had 16 A pluses in, in courses that were about genetics and biochemistry. So I was very much a high achiever, uh, captain of a sports team, very active social life, dating life, you know, going out, partying, drinking, all this stuff. I was also one of these kind of typical nice guys. So always smiling, always there to help. But on the inside, I was kind of a mess, you know, struggling with porn addiction. I was living that secret life of hiding my habits and behaviors, isolating from my friends, you know, pretending that I wasn't struggling. I was also dissatisfied in a lot of my romantic relationships. So I was always picking apart things. I was a perfectionist. I never felt like anyone was good enough. And, you know, some of the things that were going on, I was unable to enjoy the present moment. So I was always thinking about what I wanted in the future, what I didn't have, what I wanted. Uh, and this led to a lot of anxiety, depression, and loneliness, because I was always focused on what I didn't have. Even when things were great, I was always focused on, well, I want something better. I want something more. This isn't good enough. The other kind of weird thing that was happening, uh, even though I was a, a personal trainer, I was going to the gym a lot, I was also very insecure. I was struggling with body image issues, you know, just not secure and confident in myself uh, as a man at all. So that was what was going on on the inside. And I remember having this moment of kind of awakening or an existential crisis where I was walking down the street and saw these two girls walking in front of me. And I was just so consumed by lust, you know, staring at the asses of the girls in front of me. And it was like this big black hole opened up inside of me. And I realized in that moment that my porn addiction had gotten out of control, that my mind was really out of control. So that was a, a moment of awakening for me. I realized that porn had taken control of my life and that it was becoming unmanageable. So I had gotten to the point where I could no longer control my urges. I was just this ball of lust walking around and it was having a lot of consequences in my life. And I knew at that moment that I couldn't keep living that way, that I had to make a change, that if I continued going down that path, it was going to lead in a dark and scary place. I realized that I was going to end up a 70 year old man chasing college girls at, at bars. And I didn't want that to be my future. So that was when I started to really look into this topic of, of addiction, of mindfulness, of neuroplasticity, uh, happiness, really wanting to understand how to break free from my porn addiction and how to take back control of my mind. So for the past 11 years, that was 
you know, it was a bit more than 11 years ago when I had that realization. Uh, but it was about 11 years ago when I really started diving in, traveled to India, going on meditation retreats. I've been really reading and researching and doing the inner work about understanding how addiction works and how to break free from addiction to find deeper fulfillment, to find a life that you actually love, that you, you feel good about. So fast forward to today, 11 years later. I'm free from porn addiction and free from sexual shame. This is another big thing we're going to talk about later. But part of what was going on is even though I was so consumed by lust, I was also ashamed of my sexuality. You know, I didn't want to express it. I didn't know how to express it in a healthy way. I also feel less anxiety, less insecurity, and less self-judgment than before. I feel a lot more connected to other people, a lot more ability to be vulnerable and talk about my struggles. Uh, and less isolated as well. More grounded and calm and confident in myself and my body as well. And then finally, and this is important, I feel more fulfilled with my life. So more aligned with my values, my purpose, not just living this empty pursuit of pleasure and distraction. So I'm part of you know, what you might see as a growing movement of men who are walking away from porn in order to live more authentic and fulfilling lives. So we spend less time on empty pursuits and distractions, less reliance on external validation and approval, so less seeking out approval from women, less shame and regret and isolation, more interest in personal development than in material wealth, We're more interested in developing who we are as people rather than just getting more money, more fame, more validation. Also more time spent creating that life of purpose and deeper satisfactions in relationships. So rather than superficial relationships, just chasing sex and pleasure and distraction, it's really about how do you find deeper fulfillment in those relationships. The way to kind of summarize this is really that every action that we make now is focused on bringing deeper fulfillment or happiness or freedom. And this has very much been the theme of my life for the past 10 years. And it's a common theme that I see in the men I work with who are breaking free from porn addiction. So I would say that my entire life changed and in some ways started at the moment that I gave up my addiction to porn, that it almost changed my life 180 degrees. You know, I went from just seeking as much pleasure as I could to reorienting myself to living a more meaningful life. And I would say that if I can do it, I really believe that you can as well. And I can say this with full confidence because I've worked with so many men who feel like they're hopeless and then make a change. And it really is possible. You don't need to be spiritual. You don't need to travel to India and become a monk. You don't need to believe in the secret or manifestation. Um, you can be just a normal, rational person it's really just about, do you want to live in a better way? Do you want to find more happiness? So today I'm going to show you how to break free, not just from porn addiction, but really from any addictive behavior that you have. So the method that I'm going to be talking about, the four-step system, it's not just for porn addiction. It's really for any type of compulsive habit that you might have, any type of addictive behavior where you it seems out of control. You don't know how to stop doing it. Uh, this methodology will work for that as well. Mm. And again, it gives you, especially breaking free from porn, more time, more genuine satisfaction in your relationships and less mental slavery. So being less pulled around by the forces in the mind, like craving and lust and all those things. So a couple of things to keep in mind as we get started. The first is to get out of your own way. You know, the saboteur is going to show up in a lot of different ways. One of the ways it will show up is thinking, I'm just so deep in my addiction. There's no hope for me. I'm never going to break free. Another way that the saboteur can show up is thinking that you know it all already. You know, you know what you need to do. And, you know, so get out of your own way. Open yourself up. Learn what you can, what will be helpful. The other thing is it's really about taking action. So if there's just one thing that resonates with you today, then just take that and implement it. You know, just baby steps will be really powerful and important. 
And then finally, perfection is your enemy. So developing a growth mindset means you don't have to, you know, get to a hundred percent right away. Can you just move one step in the right direction? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to break free from porn overnight. It's just, can you start to release yourself from the grip of addiction? It's a lifelong journey. So be patient with yourself. All right. So now that I've given you some background, you know, where I came from, how I broke free, what is it that actually works? What's the four step system that I use and that my clients use? So I'm going to give you an overview first, and then we're going to dive deeply into one of them. And then I'll give you an overview of the other three. So the first step is really about envisioning the future. This is about connecting with that long-term vision of where you're headed. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. The second step is about building a strong mental foundation. So this is about doing the inner work, mastering your mind. You know, addiction is a disease of the mind. And so if you're not cultivating a strong mind, your recovery is not going to go anywhere. The third step is about activating your habits. And this is really about understanding what we know about habit science. How do you break free from bad habits and how do you form healthy habits? There's a lot of science that has been done in the past couple of decades, a lot that we know about what works and what doesn't work. And then the fourth step, which is so, so important is what I call breaking through to deeper fulfillment. And this is about taking that time to connect to what is it that you truly want in life? You know, what is a fulfilling life? What brings that sense of uh, deep inner contentment to you? So these are the four steps and I'm going to dive, you know, a bit deeply into the first one and I'm going to give you an overview of the last three. So the first one is all about envisioning. <clears throat> and this is about seeing your default future and aligning with your dream future. And I like this quote from Stephen Covey. He says, begin with the end in mind. And it's really all about this is seeing, you know, what is the end that you're headed towards? And, you know, the first step of this is identifying where are you headed if you don't make a change? Because the thing, especially about porn addiction, is that a lot of the consequences or the symptoms are very subtle. You know, they build up over time, but they're, they're not so obviously related to porn, as opposed to something like a hard drug or alcohol addiction, where you really see the effects instantly and immediately. With porn addiction, a lot of the consequences, the symptoms are subtle. And so you really have to envision and say, if I don't make a change, and if this continues the way it is, or if it gets worse, where am I going to be headed? And for me, this was a crystal clear moment again in that, that point in time in my life at UC Davis, where I saw myself staring at the ass of these two, you know, freshman girls in college. And I realized that I was going to be a creepy old 70 year old man that was hanging out at bars, trying to pick up on women. And that is not what I wanted for my life. I didn't want the loneliness. I didn't want to be a creep, you know, so really connecting with that. And this reflection is what I would offer to you is to really think about what is your greatest fear about where you might end up if you keep living the way you are now. You know, like right now, the consequences might not be so extreme. Okay. Like maybe it's having some effect on your relationships, your work. If it doesn't change and if it gets worse, where are you headed? So this is part of the envisioning, and it's what I call envisioning the default future. Where are you headed if you don't make a change? The next step is to flip that on its head and to really connect with this question of where do you actually want to go? You know, what is the dream future that you see for yourself? When you look 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, what do you want out of life? And you know, for me, it was realizing I wanted uh, a, a deep, intimate connection with someone who I love. I wanted more gratitude and contentment. I wanted to feel uh, kind of at ease in the present moment. I didn't want to be thinking about what I don't have and you know where I want to get to. I just wanted to feel kind of at peace inside myself, comfortable in my own skin. Uh, and that wasn't the path that I was headed on. 
So this is about it. This next step is really about envisioning the dream future, getting connected with what's important to you. Where do you want to go? So there's a few things that you can kind of connect with here. Uh, and this is about getting into alignment with the dream future. So again, this connecting on that personal level with where you actually want to go. And this is going to be different for everyone. There's no one size fits all, but usually it's something around having a more fulfilling life, feeling more content, feeling more present. You know, these are the things that I see in my clients again and again, but finding out what is it for you that you want out of life. Almost every single client that I've worked with, when I do this exercise with them, they almost always realize that something that's not in that dream future is sitting and watching porn for an hour or two hours a day, you know, hunched over their laptop in a room, hiding from their partner or their friends. It's just not part of the dream life they envision, right? And so connecting with that and seeing where is it you want to go. Alignment also means embodying your values and your deepest aspirations in everyday life. So it's not just about, okay, I want to get there in 20 years or 30 years. It's about, can I embody these values? You know, do I want to show up with presence? Do I want to be a source of safety for other people? Do I want to be strong? Do I want to be content? And then embodying those in your everyday life. It's also about this reflection that who you are is more important than what you have or even what you accomplish. You know, you can accomplish great things again and again and again, but if you are not a person that's filled with contentment, what does it matter how much you accomplish, right? If you're always looking at what you don't have, right? So recognizing that who you are and how you're showing up in the world is more important than what you have. And we know this, right? We, we all look at all the celebrities who have all the riches in the world, all the sex, all the material wealth, all the pleasure, right? But they're just not happy. And so that can be another helpful reminder about, you know, what it is that you really want. This other reflection I really like is to think about how do you want to be remembered by your loved ones when you're gone? You know, at the end of the day, do you want your life to be filled with just distracting yourself? Or do you want to take life by the horns, you know, seize the day and go live a fucking beautiful life, right? It's very easy in the moment to just get sucked into the distractions, the pleasure, the avoidance, the procrastination. But recognizing that at the end of the day, almost all of us want that more fulfilling, deeply felt sense of being alive, right? So kind of a, a recap of the envisioning step, you know, first seeing that default future, where are you headed if you don't make a change? The second is connecting with that dream future, really doing the work to identify where is it you want to go, what's important to you, getting clear on your values and aspirations. So identifying your values, this is something that I don't have time to go into here. I do go into it in my course, but there are things you can do to identify what are your values, you know, what are the things that you live by and you hold in high regard. For some people, it's honesty. For some, it's being of service. Uh, but you have to do the work to identify what are your values. Another important component of this is to set you know, goals for yourself. Goals take aspirations and they make them real. They make them, they give them deadlines, you know, things that you can actually work towards and see progress on. And that helps get you into action. <clears throat> A final note about this step, and it, it might be the most important. This is about taking ownership of your life. To get out of victimhood, you know, blaming other people, the victim mentality, uh, or thinking that somebody else is going to come save you, you really have to take ownership for your life and for your actions and recognizing that what you are doing is creating your future. You know, and you are the only person that can save you, right? Maybe other people can help, but ultimately it's up to you. And I love this idea that it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. So it might not be your fault that you're addicted to porn. You know, maybe there's a lot of things, the porn industry, uh, maybe it was a coping mechanism. Maybe somebody else introduced it to you. Um, and this is true for any other addictive substance or behavior, right? 
but it is your responsibility to make the change. Because if you don't want to change, it doesn't matter who else comes along to help you, you're going to stay stuck, right? So taking that ownership and saying, I need to do the work to get myself out of this. So that's a little bit about envisioning. I want to talk now about the, the last three steps. And I'll just talk again briefly about these for time's sake. But the second step is about mental foundations. And this is about really understanding the way your mind works and starting to master your inner world. And so for this, I'd like to share a quote from um, Yogananda. And he says this, untrained warriors are soon killed on the battlefield. So also persons untrained in the art of preserving their inner peace are quickly riddled by the bullets of worry and restlessness in active life. And so it's really seeing, you know, your mind is like a muscle, right? It's like a skill that you can develop. It is a thing that you need to train. And if you don't train it, you're going to be riddled by the bullets of worry and restlessness. And, you know, in his context, worry and restlessness, but it, in our context, when we're talking about point addiction, it's being riddled by the bullets of craving, lust, desire, temptation, procrastination. All of these things can totally, you know, take control and destroy you if you don't have a strong mind. And so the mental foundations part is really about, can you cultivate stronger mental qualities to deal with these things when they arise? So what are some of the mental qualities? Well, first, before we look at the mental qualities, just understanding neuroplasticity. This is something that changed my life, which is really the understanding that what you think and do and pay attention to is changing the structure and function of your brain. That you are creating stronger neural connections by the things you're doing and saying and thinking and even what you're paying attention to. So this was also kind of talked about by the Buddha who said, what the mind frequently thinks and ponders upon becomes the inclination of the mind. That alone, that idea, if you really understand that, you will see how destructive porn habits can be. That I realized if I was spending every night, two hours a night watching porn, I was strengthening the neural pathways of lust and craving and sexual objectification and seeking novelty and looking for, you know, a new hot woman. You know, it's like you're strengthening these neural pathways by what you do. And the more time you spend on something, the stronger those pathways become, right? Now, that's the bad news if you're watching a lot of porn or if you're watching a lot of TikTok or Instagram, you know, turning yourself into a zombie. But it's also a good thing because you can use it to your advantage, that you can cultivate wholesome mental qualities. You can, you know, just think, for example, you see these five inner strength qualities that I've listed, mindfulness, concentration, impulse control, self-compassion, and content. Just take contentment as an example. Contentment is a thought that what you have is good enough and that you are grateful for what you have in the moment. That's a thought. It's a perspective, right? And you can strengthen the neural pathways associated with that perspective. The more often you think like, wow, I'm so grateful for this tea. It's so delicious. You know, you're strengthening the neural pathways of gratitude. So we need to understand that to cultivate the mind, to shape the mind in directions that actually uh, help us and lead us to more happiness. So I like to say this, that if you don't cultivate your mind, it's like being in a boat on the open ocean with no oars or sails. You're just drifting based off of whatever waves come, whatever wind comes, you're just drifting along, right? So cultivating the inner world is like taking control. You have oars, you can row yourself in the direction you want. <clears throat> All right. Step number three, activation. This is really about mastering what we call behavioral architecture, building healthy habits for success. So it's understanding the science of habit formation, what works and what doesn't work, right? 
And for this, I like this quote from Archilochus from a long time ago. He said, we don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. So you can have the greatest aspirations for yourself to break free from porn. You can have the greatest uh, expectations of what will happen. But if you don't train yourself in the right way, if you don't set yourself up for success, it won't matter. So this is really understanding about what are the actual things you need to do and implement to break free from porn on that structural level. So some keynotes here, you know, first of all, taking care of the body we know is so important for recovery. There's a lot you can do, but the main three that I'll just mention briefly, getting enough exercise, getting enough sleep and proper nutrition. Okay. The other thing is establishing a powerful morning routine. In almost every client I've worked with who is struggling with porn addiction, implementing a morning routine is such an important part of recovery. And in my course on Hooked, I talk about the different ways that you can implement a morning routine. What are the different components that you can have? Um, there's a lot of ways to do it, but we talk about it in the course. But really just having some way of starting the day right is so important. The other thing here that you see is behavioral architecture. And this is the understanding that stimulus control is more important than self-control. A lot of people, when they try to break free from any kind of addictive behavior, they think, okay, I need more self-control. I need to just grit my teeth and push through it. But we know that stimulus control is more important than self-control. The environment that you surround yourself with, you know, is going to make or break your recovery process. So it's not just about self-control or willpower. You've got to understand behavioral architecture. The other thing is what I call the three phases of habit change. And this is understanding that any habit change that you do has three main phases. The honeymoon phase, where you're feeling great, it's easy. Then there's the fight through phase where it's difficult. You start having doubts, you start making excuses, and that's where you need to focus your energy. There are things you can do during the fight through stage to get yourself to that third phase, which is second nature. That's where it's easy. You don't think about it. Like brushing your teeth, we're all in the second nature phase, right? We don't need to fight through to brush our teeth. Okay? The final part of activation is about learning how to deal with urges and self-sabotage. Self-sabotage or urges are going to arise during recovery. Th you know, throughout the rest of your life, they're going to arise. And so you need to learn the tools for how to deal with those in the moment, right? If you just try to hide yourself from porn for the rest of your life, it won't work because you're going to watch a movie and there's going to be a porn scene and then you're going to have an urge. And if you don't know how to work with that, then you're going to relapse. So learning how to deal with urges, learning how to deal with the saboteur is also an important step in recovery. All right, the fourth step. And then after this, we're going to talk about again, the common mistakes. But the fourth step is what I call the breakthrough or breaking through to deeper fulfillment. And this is about creating a more meaningful life, a purpose filled life. Because the thing that we see with people who are struggling with porn addiction or just watching too much porn is that it ends up being this empty pursuit of more pleasure and distraction. You know, time and time again, in those words, it feels empty. My life feels pointless. It's like, why do I want it? It's just distraction. So it's about, can you build a more fulfilling life? And for this, I would like to share this quote from Matthew Ricard. Uh, and he wrote, probably the book that changed my life, I wrote a book called Happiness. Uh, and that book really taught me a lot about this topic of inner fulfillment versus just pleasure, right? So he says this, happiness is a state of inner fulfillment, not the gratification of inexhaustible desires for outward things. Happiness is a state of inner fulfillment, not the gratification of inexhaustible desires for outward things. I can't think of a better way to describe porn consumption than an inexhaustible desire, right? You know, we're all here because, we, you know, we know what it's like to watch too much porn and to be addicted to it. It's inexhaustible. It's insatiable, right? 
you always want more. It's never enough. You're always looking for a better video, you know, whatever it is. And it doesn't bring happiness. It doesn't bring joy, right? And so all of you on this call, you know that, right? That's why you're here. You've recognized it's not bringing you the happiness you want. So the question is, what is happiness? So this is what this step is about is, okay, what does it mean to live a happy life? What does it mean to find inner fulfillment? So it's about this question, what is it that you really, really want in life? And part of this is seeing recovery, not as giving things up, but it's about creating a life that you don't need to escape from. And so there are these five different inner fulfillment pillars that are really important. So solitude, learning how to be alone with your thoughts and with yourself. Ethics, you know, having an ethical framework for how to be in the world. Flow, which also includes, you know, having fun, being engaged. Generosity, being able to be of service for others. And then community and relationships. These are some of the things that we learn how to tap into. And there are different ways to tap into those in your life. So that is the four steps. And I want to recap them quickly. So again, the first is again about envisioning the future. Where are you headed if you don't make a change? That step alone, just really seeing, okay, if I don't make a change, where is this going to lead? Is so important because it gives you the motivation to change. So that's step number one. Step two, again, cultivating the inner world, the strong mental foundation. Step three, activating your habits, understanding the science of habit change uh, and behavioral architecture. And then four, connecting with these questions of what does it mean to live a more fulfilling life, you know, life that you feel happy with and content with. Now, I want to shift to why is it that people are still struggling with porn? You know, there's a lot of a lot of people who are struggling with porn addiction. And that I should say also porn addiction is a spectrum, right? You know, for some of us, it's like it has some consequences. It might not be the end of the world, but maybe it's just we're wasting too much time, too much money, too much energy. And it, that spectrum goes further where it can also be, you know, causing problems in our relationships, maybe infidelity, maybe, you know, things that are illegal. So really understanding it's a spectrum here. <clears throat> So there are three major mistakes that I want to talk about. Uh, three major mistakes that people make when trying to break free. And a lot of these come from the fact that what we learn about how to break bad habits uh, when we're growing up, whatever from our movies, whatever, it just doesn't work. So the first mistake is not doing the inner work. And what I mean by this is a lot of people, when they're trying to break a bad habit, they focus just on kicking out the addictive behavior without doing the inner work that caused them to get addicted in the first place. So for example, if you're addicted to sugar, if you're eating tons and tons of sugar, but you don't do the work to kind of understand what caused you to get addicted in the first place, then you might cut out sugar, but then you'll just uh, latch onto a new addiction. We see this with people breaking free from porn. They might cut out porn, but then they just develop addiction to something else. So you can't just grit your teeth and fight your way to sobriety. You have to connect with that. Okay, what's the inner work going on? Why did I get addicted? And what does it mean to have a more fulfilling life? I like to say it's like putting a Band-Aid on a bacterial infection. You know, you're not actually addressing the inner symptoms of what's going on. So instead, again, do that inner work to free yourself from the compulsive behaviors, from, from the nature of addiction itself, which is in the mind, craving for distraction, running away from pain or anything unpleasant, and really discover what brings you real happiness. This is so important in the work that we do. Mistake number two that I see a lot is about suppressing or shaming sexuality. So suppressing or shaming your sexuality, all it does is it sends you down the shame spiral and causes you to isolate even further, to beat yourself up, and only exacerbates the addiction. Okay. Part of what we need to do as men is really learn how to embrace our sexuality in a healthy way. You know, understanding that 
that your sexuality is a beautiful part of being human, but it's not easy to embrace that, right? Because there's so much conditioning that we get that, you know, if we show someone we're interested in them sexually, then we'll be a creep, we'll be, uh, you know, a bad person. So learning how to embrace it is so important. Learning how to let go of shame. And I should note that, you know, we also need to understand that there's healthy shame and unhealthy shame. Part of the work that we need to do is how to connect with healthy shame or say, okay, that thing I did is not skillful. It's not appropriate. I need to end that versus the unhealthy shame that says, oh, I'm a bad person or I'm broken, which then leads to more acting out, right? So this quote from Ram Dass that I love is that your problem is that you're too busy holding on to your unworthiness. You're too busy holding on to your unworthiness. You know, it's like the more that you think, oh, I'm a pervert, I'm broken, I'm, you know, I'm trying to suppress that sexuality, it just doesn't work. And it just causes you to want to avoid, isolate, and act out further. So part of it is embracing, and that is work that needs to be done. Mistake number three that I see, and this is probably the biggest and also the easiest to solve, is trying to do it all by yourself. And this quote, you know, it says it's an African proverb, but, uh, you know, those are, it's always funny that, you know, where those actually come from, nobody knows. But it's just this quote that people use is that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And the idea about this is that yeah, you can make some, you know, progress, you can break free for a week on your own, but inevitably what's going to happen is that you're going to have a moment where you relapse, where you're doubting yourself, where you're in a funk and you just give up. And if you don't have that support network kind of encouraging you to get back on it, to start again, you're, you know, it's very hard to get started again because you just tend to isolate further, right? So getting support and accountability is by far the most effective strategy. And again, this can be through a friend, can be through a coach, can be through a group, but having some way, you know, a therapist as well, having some way of telling someone, hey, I want to break free from this and I want you to hold me accountable or I want you to help me hold myself accountable. Uh, it's the most effective strategy for breaking free from porn. And really accountability, it's like a magic pill when it comes to establishing any new habit or routine. If you want to go to the gym more, you know, having an accountability body that actually gets you to go to the gym is going to be very helpful. So the three most common mistakes, again, the first, not doing the inner work, just trying to cut out porn, but then not really looking at where does this addiction come from? You know, why am I addicted in the first place? And doing the inner work to master your mind. Uh, that's the first one. The second, suppressing your sexuality or shaming yourself for your sexuality. You know, we're, I'm very sex positive. I think sex is a beautiful thing. Um, I think it's all about learning how to embrace it rather than suppress it, right? How do you, how do you show your sexuality in a healthy and skillful way? And then the third, trying to do it alone because relapse is going to happen, you're going to fall off, and it just helps to have that support network to remind you of your intentions, remind you of what's possible. So now I want to kind of shift gears and just kind of have you reflect for a moment of why did you show up here today? You know, just think for a moment, for all of those of you on the call and all of those of you who are gonna watch the replay later, why did you show up today? So maybe you're frustrated because all that outward pleasure, all the distraction isn't leading to inward happiness. You know, maybe it's just like, I keep doing all this stuff and it just doesn't fill me up. I feel empty inside. Or maybe you've heard, you know, other people talking about how they're breaking free from porn, how they're walking away from these habits and behaviors and seeing a lot of success and results. And you wanted to see, okay, how could I make this work for me? So hopefully I've been able to convince you that breaking free from compulsive porn use or porn addiction or really any behavior or habit that you are stuck on is possible, right? That it can transform your life. It can turn your life around 180 degrees. 
And if you've been on the call up until this point, then I know that you have what it takes to transform your life. You know, you are here outside of your comfort zone, right? So you can transform and you can get started with it right now. So nothing that I've shared with you here today is just theory or fluff. This again is what helped me break free from a habit that I started when I was eight or nine years old and did it up until I was 23, 24, almost every night. And it helped me break free and it works for the clients uh, that I'm working with as well. So I went from porn junkie to being now more fulfilled and living, you know, my dream life. So this is the exact methodology that I use with my clients. Uh, and if you're a skeptical, doesn't matter. That's actually great. But it's just about taking action and moving forward, taking those baby steps. So if there's one thing to take away from today that is that you can start breaking free right now by following these steps, you know, those four steps that I laid out, starting with one of them, maybe the first one, maybe another one is calling to you, but you can get started right away. So the question is, how can you leverage the power of this unhooked framework to see results in your life? So you have two choices ahead of you. You can do it the slow way through trial and error all by yourself. So you can take what you've learned today and try to implement it by yourself. Or you can do it with confidence, with ease and with guidance by going through my online program, the Unhooked Academy. And I want to highlight here that the reason that you've been struggling to break free from porn isn't because you don't have what it takes, right? It's because you've been trying to do this on your own with no roadmap. Just, okay, let me stop watching porn. I don't know how, I don't know what to do, but let me just try to stop. But you have been doing it on your own with no accountability, no support, and no roadmap for how to get there. So if you're serious about getting free, it's time to get the support that you need to see those lasting results. Because the other thing, you know, that first step of reflecting on where is this headed? is to think about what are, what am I losing by continuing to behave in this way? How many hours a day am I losing? I worked with one client who's a, a lawyer and he charges $675 an hour for his work. And he was spending, you know, six hours a day on porn and social media. Just think about how much money you're leaving on the table, just the time wasted, let alone all the other effects on your relationships, your happiness, your you know, your well-being, just the time waste alone, right? So I'd like to just take a moment, if that's okay with you. I know you guys are all here and I want to wrap up on time, but um, I just want to take a moment to introduce my Unhooked Academy, which is my online program uh, that goes through step-by-step -step all of these modules that I've talked about, all of the steps in Breaking Free. So it's designed to take you by the hand through each of the steps and go deeply into each one. And it is the quickest, most effective way to go from point A to point B. If you are struggling with porn addiction and you want to break free from that compulsive relationship with it, the Unhooked Academy is the thing that's going to get you there. So what's included? The four core modules. It has over three hours of video content, 40 different videos, guided meditations, journaling prompts, all that stuff. But Again, the most important thing is it, it helps you do the work you need to do to actually understand your addiction and then implement a strategy to help you break free. 